Hi everyone, this is Mike Jacoby from Lucid Vision Labs, and welcome to our presentation, Bin Picking with Helios 2, our next generation 3D time of flight camera and settings to improve your point cloud. Just a quick overview of Lucid Vision Labs, we have four main camera families. They're all Ethernet-based cameras. We have over 75 unique camera models, and our cameras are designed and manufactured in Canada. One of the main four camera families is our Helios line of 3D time of flight cameras, with our Helios 2 being our latest model. Just to add some history to our 3D cameras, we were the first to announce our original Helios camera featuring Sony's IMX556 depth sense sensor back in October 2018, and showcased a working demo unit in November 2018 at Vision Stuttgart, Germany. We launched series production units in July 2019 and followed that up with the launch of an embedded MIPI version, the Helios Flex, in February 2020. Now we saw a lot of success with these two models and working with customers and designers, we were able to get a lot of great feedback and saw room for further improvement, which ultimately culminated in the release of our latest Helios 2 IP67 TOF camera. During that time as well, we've also created some really great educational time of flight content that's available on our thinklucid.com website, with the latest being an application note on how to combine RGB data from a color camera with your Helios point cloud. Okay, moving on, why use the Helios 2 for bin picking? Well, as I mentioned earlier, we use Sony's IMX556 depth sense sensor, which for time of flight technology provides superior 3D depth data. We can achieve an accuracy of plus minus four millimeters, submillimeter precision of 0.6 millimeters at one meter distance, has a resolution of 640 by 480 and a working range of 0.3 meters up to 8.3 meters at 30 frames per second. To get the best point clouds out of the camera, you need to maximize the amount of light transmission from the reflected light emitted from the laser diodes. Helios 2 achieves this by using 850 nanometer Vexel diodes, which achieves a 56.6% quantum efficiency in the IMX556 sensor. That's an 88% higher quantum efficiency compared to 940 nanometer Vexels. Now, while 850 nanometers can't really be used outdoors, it will provide a much better quality point cloud for indoor bin picking applications. In addition, we've redesigned our optics from the original Helios to greatly reduce light scattering, known as veiling glare, which provides cleaner, less noisy point clouds. And finally, we've added an ambient light filter to provide more consistent performance under different indoor lighting types. 3D performance aside, the Helios 2 camera itself is factory tough, built to withstand harsh industrial environments. It is shock and vibration certified, has EMC industrial immunity, is dustproof and water resistant thanks to its IP67 case, offers a 100 meter cable length with power over Ethernet. It uses M12 and M8 secure connectors, which provide a more robust cable connection. The camera itself is die cast aluminum, which makes it strong and lightweight, weighing only 398 grams, along with providing excellent heat dissipation without the need for additional heat sinks or fans. So the Helios 2 features some great options that can help you improve your point cloud, especially when dealing with more challenging object materials, such as metals or shiny plastics. We have image accumulation, exposure and gain control, confidence threshold and spatial filtering, adding RGB data, and combining up to five additional Helios 2 cameras in the same area to expand your field of view without worrying about interference from one another. But for this presentation though, we'll focus mainly on the first four on this list. Now we need to set the distance operating mode for the camera. The working range of 8.33 meters is divided into six distance operating modes. And with a Helios 2, each mode starting point isn't locked to the front of the camera anymore. You can actually set the starting point of each mode up and down the entire 8.3 meter range. With this in mind, we need to pick the mode that offers the best accuracy and precision. And if our bin size allows it, that would either be the 1250 millimeter mode or the 5000 millimeter mode, with both modes offering excellent accuracy as well as sub millimeter precision if the distance to the camera to the object is one meter. So if we set the camera's distance one meter away from the bin, that would give us an imaging area of around 1.35 meters by 0.95 meters based on the camera's field of view 
of 69 by 51 degrees. And for the majority of examples that we're going to show in the following slides, the largest bin we're going to use is 0.55 by 0.45 by 0.3 meters. Now the first Helios 2 feature we talked about on that list was image accumulation. And in this example, we're imaging dark metal monitor wall mounts. Now what we'll see in the following slide that I'm going to show you in a moment is that the top mounts are really noisy that there really isn't enough reflected light to make a clean point cloud right off the bat. What we need to do in order to get a great depth image that we're showing on the right is we need to set the final settings to the following. Image accumulation at 16 frames, exposure at 1000 microseconds, gain will be set to low, confidence threshold off, and spatial filtering off. For the following slide, I'm just going to show how image accumulation will affect this example. So here we have the point cloud showing with image accumulation set off. Now you can see the top metal brackets are very noisy. They're not bad at the bottom, but even those are a bit noisy as well. And we have image accumulation set to only one, so it's running at the full 30 frames. If we then bump that up to four, so we're gonna stack four depth frames together, we can see a big improvement already in the quality of the point cloud on the top metal brackets. Now we're going to bump that even higher to see if we can get an even better point cloud. We're going to set that to 16. And now you can see we've been able to improve the point cloud even further. Where we have nice clean edges, we can see that we've reduced the noise overall in the top brackets, moving from no image accumulation up to 4, and furthermore moving it up to 16. Now here we're going to show an example of how exposure control can help with oversaturation, which can be typical with metal as well as plastics. In this case, we're showing an example of metal struts. In this specific area, we'll show that we're getting a lot of specular highlights, and this shiny area needs adjustments. But if we look at the right image, we'll see that black dark parts are actually showing up really well. So here's an example of just because an object is dark doesn't mean it's not appropriate for the Helios 2 or time of flight technology. The final settings we come to is image accumulation set to four frames, exposure set to 250, gain low, confidence threshold, and spatial filtering is off. So here, right off the bat, you can see all the metal struts are looking good except for that one bottom part. We're actually getting oversaturation and that's causing the points to show up behind the point cloud. So exposure, as you can see on the left-hand side, is set to a thousand microseconds, which is too high for, this, uh, for these metal struts. If we set it down to 250, we instantly get a massive improvement. Sharp, clean, crisp lines. So by reducing the exposure time, we can reduce the amount of reflection from oversaturation into something that's more appropriate for the camera to calculate a 3D point cloud. Here we have some more challenging objects, plastic PVC pipes, some that are white, very shiny, as well as dark ones. This is an example of conversion gain that we're going to show. So again, we're going to get a lot of specular highlights, shiny areas that need adjustments. Our final settings will be four frames for image accumulation, exposure set to 1,000, gain low, confidence threshold will be on, and spatial filtering will be off. As you can see, we're having voids in the image where the camera just can't get any data to properly create point cloud in that area because it's just oversaturated. And so what we just did there is we just switched conversion gain from high to low. We'll do it again. If we set it high, it's too much and we're getting oversaturation. We set it to low and now we have some really great clean point clouds for these curved PVC pipes. For the next one, we're gonna show spatial filtering on these plastic keyboards. Now we're gonna see a lot of details on these keyboards, especially in the actual key buttons. But what if we don't really need all that detail and what we really want is just a more enhanced edge over the entire keyboard itself. So our final settings will be four frames for image accumulation, exposure at 1000 microseconds, gain set to low, confidence threshold on, and spatial filtering on as well. And here right away, we can see a lot of great detail in the buttons but maybe that might interfere with our algorithm and we just wanna enhance the overall shape of the keyboard itself. So we lose a bit of detail on the keys, but we get an enhancement on the edges over the entire keyboard. Now you may or may not need this type of option for your application, but we do give you the choice where this will help smooth out any bumps or details that are really not essential to your algorithm. 
And finally, let's put all these different settings together. So in this example, we have some really shallow plastic bottles at the bottom of our bin, toothpaste, lotion, etc. There are going to be some examples, such as this transparent bottle with gel, where it's just too difficult for time of flight. However, these other bottles, though, there's a lot of shine going on, and they're very shallow. But by working with these different settings in the previous slides, we can get a really great point cloud. So our final settings are 16 frames for image accumulation, exposure set to 250 microseconds, gain is low, confidence threshold off, spatial filtering off. So right off the bat, because they're really shallow, we should limit our depth range just to give us a better isolated view on the actual bottles at the bottom of our bin. So I'm just limiting the depth range using our slider. As you can see, it's pretty noisy. It's, it's not really good right now. So the first thing we're gonna look at is we're gonna see our exposure time bump to 250. It was set too low. And once we set it to 250, we get a huge improvement in the quality of our point cloud. Let's try even a thousand, a little bit more improvement, but now we're getting some oversaturation. You can see right at the bottom here, we're getting some oversaturation. As well, as I said earlier, the transparent gel bottle is just not doing well. We're actually getting like a reverse point cloud. So we're gonna set that back to 250. And now we're gonna try uh, working with gain. Right now it's set to high, let's set it to low. And we didn't see much change from that. So maybe that will allow us to go back to the exposure setting and bump it back up without seeing that overexposure at the bottom. And so yeah, we get an improvement, but there's still a little bit of oversaturation at that tiny bit. So maybe we, can, we, we don't mind that and we just need to filter out those, those points and we can do that with confidence threshold. Just by turning it on, we're able to filter out those noisy pixels, oversaturated pixels. So not bad. It's a lot better from where we started from, but maybe we can squeeze out even more detail from this point cloud by playing around with image accumulation. So at the start, the point cloud was already set to four for image accumulation. Let's see what happens if we bump that up some more. So we're gonna bump it up to eight to see if we can get an improvement. And there is a tiny improvement. Definitely there is something there. Let's try 16 just for fun. Uh, not so much, we're kind of getting a diminishing return on that, but we'll leave it at 16. And we'll see if the new image accumulation will help us uh, deal with that oversaturation at the bottom tip of that bottom bottle. So we're just gonna turn off confidence threshold. So it shows all the, all the dots no matter what. And we're gonna go back to exposure and set it down to 250. As you can see, we probably have hit the maximum quality for this point cloud. We sort of went full circle there, but I wanted to highlight how each of these settings affects one another, and by taking just a few minutes to adjust them back and forth, you can greatly improve the quality of your point cloud. There is, of course, one final thing we can do to enhance this point cloud, and that is adding RGB data. Here's an example of RGB data from our Triton camera overlaid on our 3D point cloud. By using color on the point cloud, this can further add more detail and help your algorithm pinpoint your objects. Here we can see the blue bottle coming out, the beige. You can see a little bit of the blue writing on the bottom left bottle as well as the deep blue logo on the top bottle is coming out nice and clear. Again, this can add some extra data that could be helpful to your algorithm if you're doing any pattern recognition using color. Of course, we do get this question often is how small can you go with your target objects? Well, in a perfect world such as this, probably you can go around two centimeter cubed or around three centimeters, but ultimately you have to test because depending on the reflectivity of the object, as well as how many objects are placed in one bin, we could suffer a lot from multipath, which could warp the objects quite a bit. So ultimately, you do have to test. It really depends on the target reflectivity and the surrounding reflective surfaces. And just some simple application examples. Our Helios 2 is used in multiple bin picking applications. Here's an example of a company using our Helios 2 to do bin picking of cardboard boxes within plastic bins. 
They're using our Arena SDK APIs to write their own custom software to help sort bin picking using suction grippers on the robot arm. We also have another interesting application where they're using our Helios for autonomous rack stacking. This is an example of a company overcoming specular reflection on their metal rack. They're able to use the Helios camera to properly stack these racks of cheese without any manual operation. So in the previous slides, you saw me making changes using our ArenaView GUI, which is part of our Arena software development kit. It's a comprehensive toolkit that offers multi-platform support, Windows and Linux and ARM, as well as multi-language support and access to everything you need, the XYZ point cloud data, intensity information, confidence map, like I mentioned earlier, the ArenaView GUI allows you to quickly change settings to see what are the best settings for yourself. Uh, we have rich examples as well as a performance focused driver optimized for low CPU resources. Also, we have great third party 3D support from these major 3D software vendors that can help you in your bin picking application. Thanks so much for joining me for this Helios 2 bin picking presentation. If you have any more questions, feel free to contact our sales teams on the emails to your right. Find out more about our Helios 2 camera at thinklucid.com. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.